So I think we just found out where our water leak was coming from. Well, one of them. <sighs> hey, all you people, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another episode of Resurrecting This Honda Pilot. And welcome back to another episode where it looks like I peed myself by leaning against the Honda Pilot. Or maybe I did pee myself. In the previous episode of this, my friend Dan and I tried to get this up and running again. Just a quick recap of that episode so you don't have to waste your time watching it. The old battery was garbage, went to Walmart, got a new battery, it finally started. We tested out the new EGR valve. It didn't really do much in the way of helping how this car ran. I pulled it out of the neighbor's driveway. The e-brake was on, left a massive peel in the street and in our driveway, became the owner of a wonderful new shovel and created a deadline for ourselves. In this episode, we are gonna try and get the engine running better. I'm going to replace the injectors. I am going to give it a valve adjustment. I'm going to be cleaning the fuel filter. Now, I've never done this before, so you and I are going to be learning together. So, fingers crossed, this goes well, and if you like what you see, feel free to subscribe and like the video. All right, let's get to it. First thing I did was clean out this rolling shed, at least enough for me to get to the fuel pump and the fuel filter. These fuel pumps are located inside the fuel tanks, but they make it easier to get to without having to remove the entire tank. Nice headrest, huh? You take out the larger of the two rear seat portions to access this carpet flap. And underneath, there's a metal plate that you remove. It's oh. not bad, like for a third row seat. For a third row seat, wow. See all those commercials? Got dirty balls. Clean them up with orbit. I vacuum the dirt around the edges so nothing would fall into the tank. Then the top of the pump unscrews and you lift out the entire pump assembly. Oh yeah. That's our fuel filter. Got all sorts of crud in there. So that definitely does not help the state of the car. From what I've seen, you can't buy replacements for these filters online. So I'm just gonna go rinse it out with water, let it dry and hope for the best. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a small dead caterpillar in here. I think with a couple little friends, maybe it's babies, but I heard that gives you extra horsepower. So I don't know. All right, we just got the cleaned fuel pump and fuel filter back in there. So let's see how it starts up and see if the throttle response is any better. I can hear the pump priming back there. It's a good sign. The idle seems steadier. Throttle response seems a lot quicker too. That definitely helps. All right, next, uh, the valve adjustments, huh? Getting the valve covers off these J35 engines is a little bit of a process. It includes taking off the intake boot, throttle body, and then the entire intake manifold. Plus, I'm changing the injectors while I have the manifold off, so I have to disconnect the fuel lines. I'm gonna attempt to take off this fuel line here, and if it sprays me, it sprays me. Ooh, all right, eh, it wasn't too bad. After getting the fuel lines off, it was time to take out the injectors. These hadn't been removed or changed in hundreds of thousands of miles, so they were really stuck in there. They ended up coming out in pieces. After I had these out, I made sure the openings were covered, and then I removed the ignition coils and loosened the wiring harnesses. And boom, valve cover off. So I wanna put this valve cover back on so I don't get any debris in here when I take the, the rear valve cover off, but it's so dirty. I think I might just have to power wash it first, then put it back on. The rear valve cover on bank one is a little trickier to remove because it's tucked so close to the firewall. And the wiring harness is also a lot tighter than the front one. Once I had both valve covers off, I removed the gaskets because the old ones were dry and brittle. And then I replaced them with a basic gasket kit from the local auto parts store. And then I did the same thing for the spark plug gaskets. One other thing I did was check the PCV, uh, the pressure control valve. If you shake it up and down, you can't hear the valve moving. I got a new one from Advanced Auto Parts. You can hear the valve moving. I know it's hard to see me, but I'm in the passenger wheel well, turning the crank pulley, which properly aligns each set of valves for adjusting. 
This whole process was a little confusing at first, but there's a couple really great videos on YouTube on how to do this that I'll link in the description below. In general, the exhaust valves have a tendency to tighten over time, and the intake valves tend to loosen. Exhaust ones first. Wow, way too tight. The exhaust ones are set to like 0.25 when this should be 0.28 to 0.32. Basically what I'm doing is making sure the intake and exhaust valves have the proper clearance so the engine can actually breathe correctly when it's running. After getting the hang of this, it was pretty simple actually. Once you kind of understand what you're doing, it is super easy to do and you can do it too. Alrighty, I know the sun's going down, it's starting to get dark. Rain is in the forecast for the next three or four days. I'm gonna set up some lights and we're gonna finish this tonight. After double checking that I had everything tightened down, I cleaned off the valve cover mounting points to make sure that the gaskets would fit nice and snug. And then it was time to reconnect and reassemble everything. Engines are like puzzles, I guess. I've never been very good at puzzles. Uh, is this so? Is this an alcoholic Wendy's beverage? It is. <laughs> it might not be good, so I'm, I'm so hungry that I don't care. <laughs> it's also gonna hit me in the face. <laughs> Just throw up my mouth. Good though, nice. All right, it is the next morning. Um, we kind of have a gap in the rain, but it is misting out, so I'm gonna try and get this done quickly. Let's try and start it up. Fingers crossed I put everything back on okay and hooked everything up. I might actually just leave the throttle body open and leave this open. This just attaches to the intake boot. There's no mass airflow sensor. There's an MAP, but that's behind the throttle body, so I feel like it won't really matter too much. Let's see. It's running a hell of a lot better. Well, at low RPM, when you rev it, it's really shaky here. But yeah, overall, it seems a lot happier. Alrighty, so I scanned the check engine light and it looks like we're getting a misfire in cylinder two and three, which means it could be a variety of things. But since both of those cylinders are on bank one, my guess is that it's probably the busted catalytic converter causing those misfires. So I think the next step is to go to the junkyard and get some new cats and exhaust and O2 sensors. And I think that should do it. But overall, it's running way better. And I'm gonna keep going with this project. Once I do that, the four wheel drive should have a fighting chance at working. And then we can start diagnosing some of the other issues with this heinous Honda as some people call it. But until then, drop a comment below and let me know what you think is causing those misfires and stay tuned for the next episode of this. Alrighty, take care now, bye bye then. Nice, you got the cabin air filter. Yes. For the full runner. Excited. Nice. He handed it to me and he's like, there's something in it, I promise, feel it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like freaking A6 running shoes. <laughs>